Thank you guys for joining in another episode of the Ketonian Corner. I'm Jolene Hale, and I'm here with my co-host, John Davidson. Hello, hello. So today we have um, two guests. This is the first time we've interviewed two people at one time, so I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, we you have a got, low barrier of excitement. It's well, <laughs> <laughs> I try to stay excited about everything. All right, all right, I love it. Um, so we have Miriam and Chris from uh, Keto Chow. Hello, you guys. Hi. So we met you guys uh, September last year at KetoCon and um, have been talking that we were going to bring you guys on and then the end of the year got here and went. So I'm glad we finally were able to pull this off and, and get you guys on the show. And I think maybe it took me running out of your products to remember. <laughs> <laughs> we hadn't reached out to yet. yet. <laughs> so how's that? Nice. <laughs> so um, I... You guys do follow, both of you follow the ketogenic diet. Is that correct? Yes. Yep, that's absolutely correct. So I've been on it for, oh, it's going on three years now, and Miriam's been on it for, what, two? two? Yeah. Nice. So how, how did you guys get into um, the keto diet? So there's our introduction to, uh, uh, to keto, and then there's the keto diet. Our first introduction to keto was one of our sons was having um, epileptic seizures, and it the uh, the different uh, anticonvulsants that they were giving him just they just weren't working. We were on what number was it? Twelve. We're on our twelfth um, different medicine, and the the doctor was like, if if something doesn't work, we're going to have to put him on a keto diet. And I wasn't there, but Miriam came home with a bunch of the. Uh, like handouts talking about the keto diet and what it was and what you had to do. And I remember thinking, uh, there's no way anybody could possibly live like that. <laughs> and then, uh, you, well, you had like a back, backwards introduction. Then most, most people find it on social media or something. They don't usually get something from their doctors. That's a little, that's a little different. Yeah. Well, and we're actually kind of, it is nice that that doctor was tuned into the old ways of doing it enough to to know that that was an option, and it was kind of a last ditch option. And well, I guess fortunately for us, the the next medicine did work, and he's been seizure free for almost ten six years. Six years. Six. Yeah. Two thousand nine. Haha. So. But so we we didn't ever do a keto diet at that time. But then um, fast forward to 2014, um, I was doing a a meal replacement drink that I was mixing up myself. It was called People Chow, um, and I I had initially lost weight doing it, but it was really high in carbohydrates, um, lots of corn masa, and I. Uh, I came back from a computer conference where I had gained a bunch of weight. I was like, you know what? Something's got to change. I need to do something else. So I had read about that there was there were keto versions of the meal replacement uh, recipes that you could mix up. And so I tried one of those. And ever since October 2014, that's what I've been doing. Now, I didn't do any research at first. I did it completely wrong. I got keto flu real bad. Um <laughs> It, it was it was awful. I was literally laying in bed. I was like, oh, I just feel awful, like I had the flu. And so I, I just Googled keto flu. It turns out it's a thing. <laughs> so you got the keto flu before you even knew it was a thing, huh? Yeah, I didn't even. I, I, I'm so old school. Yeah, even before I knew it was a thing. But uh, yeah, so I uh, I drank some chicken broth. It felt better almost immediately, and. Uh, then that was when I actually started doing research. So it was, you know, a couple days into it that I, I finally figured out how keto works. And I kind of did that backwards. <laughs> so, Chris, just to step back a little bit, like, since you're a computer guy and you're kind of tech savvy, were you, like, stimulated by the conversations around Soylent? I know that was kind of popular uh, yes. for a complete – were you going, like, that that direction where you're completely replacing all of your meals yeah that soylent uh was actually what started it all so okay i can't even pronounce it right we'll go with that <laughs> well so the uh the guys that made soylent they 
They originally they did a crowdfunding campaign, and I thought that sounded cool, but I didn't want to put the two hundred fifty dollars to buy an entire month's worth. And then they kept on delaying it and delaying it, and so um, I just decided to start doing a, a do-it-yourself recipe on my own. And it was with that people chow stuff because soil and green is people, blah blah blah. It's it's really funny. Um, the chow comes from Bachelor <laughs> Chow. If you're familiar with Futurama, there's a fake product called Bachelor Chow that's everything that you need. Um, and they have a new version with flavor. <laughs> you're really you're really uh, playing yourself as a tech kind of nerd there. You that's realize what, that's that. what I am. I, I, I make no excuses about it. Hey, but, I, uh, hey, I fly the flag, too. I'm okay with that. I got no problem with it. Just the fact that you you know are commenting Futurama, it's probably the first time we've had that in a one of our shows, but yeah. I, I'm totally get back to totally next you. <laughs> but yeah, the the whole point of it is that it's it's all of the food that you need. It's you can replace one meal or two meals or all of your meals, and you're not going to suffer um, any nutritional deficiencies. And that really appealed to me because I, you know, I had a a problem with food and eating too much and snacking and everything so um by going with a, a complete meal replacement it, it's what worked for me for a couple months but because it was a hard high carb diet once again i i lost 12 pounds initially and i gained it all back so going with a, a keto version it well it, yeah it completely turned my life around it's the only it's the only lasting change I've ever made like that that has cons- has kept the weight off and improved my health. Well, we've, we've talked a ton about the benefits of keto and stuff. So I think everyone's probably, if they've heard us before, they've heard all about that. But what yeah. I'm interested in is how did you go from you're making yourself this meal replacement to I am going to open source. I, I call it open source because I'm a tech geek also. But <laughs> it sounds like you, you've completely, per your website, broadcast exactly how you make it so that seems to me like an an anti-business strategy (laughs) well it is a it is a really strange way of advertising but i don't know it was first off it was the not sucky thing to do um my and my mom hates it that i do that i i actually if you go back in time i get that from my dad uh, my dad does nightscape photography, and he's he's actually an internationally well-known photographer. Um, but he he teaches people how to do stuff. That's that's what he does, and um, that's just kind of something that I don't know. I, I picked up from somewhere from him. But uh, so to to make the the recipe and put it out there, you know it. At the time, when, when the whole soil and movement was starting, everybody was putting their recipes out there. It was just a, a big community where we were sharing. And so um, I, I started developing it, and it, it absolutely I was going to put it out there as open source for everybody to use and abuse. Well, plus, at the time, there was no possible way that I could even come close to manufacturing the, the amount that everybody wanted to have because... Well, we were we were quite literally mixing it in our kitchen and shipping on our uh, dining room table, so it started off very very small. And uh, doing it as an open source thing, like I said, it was the it was the not sucky thing to do. Um, and I just did you get did you get good feedback? Like if you were open sourcing it, a lot of a lot of times you think or open source, you think other people contributing. Oh yeah, and I know you've. Got- You've got point releases. You're you're one of the only people I know that has products that are you know point eight, point nine, two point oh. Yeah. So you got, you you got other feedback from other people who are trying things and uh, and then went from there. Yeah, we totally did. So um, we've had people who, well, first off, the the recipe itself it's it's it draws a lot on other people's ideas as far as. Um, there was a guy named. There is a guy named Ken Swanson. He had the idea of using heavy cream as the calorie base, which blew my mind. I don't know why I didn't think of that, but um, and so yeah, I've gotten feedback from other people, different ways I could improve, and I've just rolled that into the product. And it's every time I learn something new about nutrition that could help the product, 
I put that in. And so uh, when people are like, well, you shouldn't, um, psyllium husk isn't as good as using something like acacia gum for the fiber. And I'm like, okay, why? And they're like, well, because of the way it works on your gut, it actually irritates your, uh, your large intestine to cause a uh, core dump. Um, and so you want to use something like acacia gum instead. And it's like, oh, okay, cool. So getting that feedback has also really helped. And also it, it provides an alternative to people who don't want to buy it from me. If they want, if they want to mix it themselves, or if they want to customize it, that's another thing that people are able to do with the open recipe. Is you you want to use a different protein powder? You want to use something that doesn't have sucralose, or you want to use um, you want to add more magnesium or anything like that? You can customize it yourself. So, so uh, I'm just trying to reel us back in. I just I completely went way off. The reservation because I'm so excited. It's fine. Uh, yeah. But you did mention um, that you had started this out of your house. So yeah. um, do you have that in a brick and mortar now? And do you have employees or is it just the two of you still doing this? Well, Mary, do you want to tell the history of how it all started? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So how about you start after the point you decided he's not crazy? Because it had to be what, six months where you thought he was crazy? So um, it was more than six months. <laughs> more than six months. All right. Well, hey, at least you're honest. So to give just a little bit of background, um, we have a, a bunch of children. Um, we had a set of twins, and this will all relate. I'll get to this. Uh, you'll see how this all fits in. We had a set of twins, twin girls, and then we had a singleton. And then we we thought, you know, that twins thing was fun. Let's do that again. Yeah, right. So we had another set of twins. <laughs> And then we had another singleton. So we have a oh, lot man, of kids. Four people in the middle. Four kids in the middle. <laughs> well, so two two singles and four twins. So uh, yeah, it's it's really entertaining. But what I'm getting with that is people would always ask, "Does Miriam work?" And it used to be I would say, "Miriam is not gainfully employed outside of the home." Never say that a mother of twins does not work. <laughs> yeah, smart man. Now, she she did have a kind of a, a side job. She was helping out a neighbor doing uh, craft stuff. And this was back at the beginning of 2015 where I had I s first put out the recipe uh, 0 0.09 of Keto Chow. I think it was on January 1st of 2015. And... Um, at the time, I, I it was it was really small the, the operation. If if you placed an order, I would mix up your order. I would measure out all the ingredients for your order one at a time. One at a time. <laughs> shake it up, put it into a Ziploc bag, into another Ziploc bag, and then mail that off. And and then I would go to the post office. Yep. Well, <laughs> no, not yet. You weren't going to the post office yet. It was a couple months. Yeah, so was she was still doing her thing. Um, and after a couple months of this, um, I think it was maybe in March of 2015, I, I said, you know, this is starting to get to the point where I'm doing like, I mean, we're talking big time. I was doing like 10 orders a day. I was like, you know, you could probably, it would probably be better if, if you helped me instead of doing the craft stuff. Even though the crafts are more fun. <laughs> <laughs> and so, well, you know, it does make sense. So she started helping me. So I would do the mixing. I was mixing guy. So I would get the list of all the orders and count them up. How many chocolate, how many vanilla. Oh, there's a banana. Oh, well, I'm get, we're going to have to wait on that for a couple days because I have to order the banana in. So that sort of the thing. Banana, the banana run. <laughs> up and everything and uh, then she would ship it off and then she would go to the post office and and all of this was happening at night after i got home from work at like six o'clock at night and our kids would watch tv <laughs> yeah. and it was just it was a really small operation and then it started to get bigger and finally she said it was like can can i start having this this neighbor need some money can we have them start shipping for us so it's yeah yeah they can they can ship for us and so it was still me mixing and then we started having other people help mix and then we got an actual mixer so 
uh, my my arm strength started to wane because I was mixing Sticking up each one up in, by hand. Because <laughs> that's doing each one individually. Um, but then, yeah, we were doing them almost six at a time, and then we were we got better packaging, no more uh, Ziploc bags, and we cleaned out the craft room and made it into an office <laughs> <laughs> and had shelves that had inventory in it so we could pull the inventory and yep. started just keeping up on inventory. And as the orders came in, we would send out the stuff and it became easier, but we still were mixing so much. Yeah. And it, ev everything in our house was covered with chocolate protein powder more than <laughs> anything else. Um, we recently uh, moved our fridge and there was at least an eighth of an inch of <laughs> <clears throat> so are you still producing out of your house now, or are you... At that point, we were still doing it under the auspices of the Utah Cottage Food Industry um, laws, So, which meant that we had to do it out of our kitchen. But um, okay. it, I, this, it just wasn't sustainable. We, the business was growing enough that it was like, and this is still with people making it themselves, but enough people wanted to buy it from us that... We needed to make a change, and so I started the long search. It took it took almost exactly a year it was a long search. to get um, industrial scale manufacturing going with a co-packaging facility, which would be nice because then it's FDA inspected, it's GMP. They're doing they do testing on it, yeah, and all the batching safe. So that's that's the way we wanted to go so that we could, you know, get our kitchen back. <laughs> but uh, so it took about a year. Um, but finally, um, we were able to find a place. And then it took a couple months to get that up and going because we had some problems with the protein. Um, it tasted awful and it just wasn't suitable. And so we went back and forth and back and forth. And finally, we got just what we wanted. And that was Keto Chow 2.0. Um, up until that point, we'd been using off-the-shelf protein powder for the flavoring and sweetener, but now we're uh, buying protein powder, just raw protein powder by the pallet, and, and our own custom flavorings and all of that stuff. So um, a lot better scaling. <laughs> So the recipe is still open source if you use a protein powder you buy off the shelf. So you have to do a little bit of math, but our flavor is different than yeah. anybody who makes it themselves. Well, and, and along with that, um, we, we had a bunch of people who were international, and they didn't want to pay the exorbitant shipping that the Postal Service charges for shipping something that heavy and that bulky. And so we started taking what we called the base powder. It was um, when we would mix it up at home, we would have all of the ingredients together in kind of this pre-blend, and then we would stick that into the mixer along with whatever flavor. And protein. It, a protein it was going to be, so chocolate or vanilla or strawberry, whatever. And we got this great idea of taking that base blend and selling just that. And we call it base powder. We used to call it just the vitamins, but it also has minerals. Um, so base powder is a better name for it. And if you, even to this day, if, if you want to customize it yourself as far as flavoring and sweetener, and protein and sweetener. or you're international, you can still get the base powder. And it costs less than buying the full mix, especially if you're international. And then you just add your own protein to it. So that's what you recommend if somebody, like, for example, doesn't like sucralose? Is that, that's what you mentioned earlier. Yeah, so, so if you don't like sucralose, if you want to use egg white protein. And coming, coming up, we're, we're actually working on a, a new version that uh, we have. One of the flavors will be a natural strawberry, we call it. it it'll use monk fruit for the sweetener. And there's yeah. another flavor that it's almost ready to go. It's savory chicken soup. I will have no soup. Oh. So I was gonna. So this is on my cool questions to ask you because I want to ask about the savory soup and the barbecue. Uh huh. So we we don't. I tried to do a uh, a bacon cheese flavor. It wasn't very good. Yeah. <laughs> it, the bacon smelled weird. It was because it's a it's vegetarian. A, it's an artificial bacon. Yeah. So oh, just, oh gotcha. But, yeah. the, but the chicken soup was a slam dunk. I mean, it's um, I've I've used that to uh, have keto chow on a plane because the TSA they don't like liquids, but they don't they don't care about butter. So I had a hydro flask with a half a stick of butter, and I just when I got past the security, I 
I went to a coffee shop and got hot water for my tea and yeah. uh, mixed that up with the, the chicken stuff, and it was fantastic. Nice. All right. Well, I haven't tried the chicken stuff yet, but that sounds like, that sounds kind of good. What would you end up using for the chicken stock then? Because a lot of those, like MPC powder and those type of things, they usually put that on top on some type of agent, right? Yeah. So, so how does that work? The, for using for all the new flavors um, with so it, we're we're coming out with keto chow 2.1. Um, it's got a few minor changes. It's got milk protein instead of whey protein, so it digests slower and makes you feel full uh, longer. Um, we have more magnesium, uh, things like that. But the big change that people are going to notice more than anything else is we're coming out with additional flavors. And so when we were investigating all the different flavors and trying different ones, um, something that somebody has suggested, I think it was actually my brother, he wanted a, a, a nacho cheese flavor. And there are no suitable cheese flavors that aren't completely full of maltodextrin. So I was on my I was on the lookout for savory flavors, and these people the, the flavoring house had a chicken soup flavor. So we grabbed that and tested it, and it was a little bit too strong when I first tested it. So I, I dialed back the flavor a bit, but um, yeah, it's and it, strangely enough, it's vegetarian. I'm not sure how they pulled that off, but it is. So that that that's pretty that's pretty amazing. When you think about it, well, I, I'm I'm looking forward to trying that. Okay, well, I've got a couple of test ones in my bag. Um, I might send you one. <laughs> All right, well, let's, let's talk offline about that. So, how in the world do you juggle business and family? Then, did that really help to move out into the other building? Yeah. So coming here. So now we're uh, we forgot that part. You asked us if we're, we got a brick and mortar. We do have a warehouse. Um, we got that going in We've September been here for a year. Yeah, mm -hmm. September of 2016. Um, and initially it was way too big. It was this giant empty warehouse, and we were just taking up a tiny little corner of it. And now we're probably going to need to get some more pallet racks to put stuff on. But uh, um, having the uh, the the warehouse, and it's only five minutes from our house, which is absolutely fantastic. Uh, Miriam insisted that we get this one because it was yes. so close, even though it was more expensive and way it's more. nicer too than the other ones. We <laughs> it is. At. It is a lot nicer. Uh, but so having this as a place to go is kind of nice. Um, now I recently quit my full time job. I used to be a system administrator, and it was getting to the point where I was neglecting my real job. Uh, by doing that. And so that's helped a lot. I'm able to get all the stuff done now at work instead of coming home and, and work, working. Yeah, yeah, working my second job. So, and I, I also wanted to uh, quit my job and come do this. So, because Miriam is, well, she, her business card says chief operations officer. Mm -hmm. She's the one who's been in charge of uh, scheduling employees and figuring out who can win and where, work where. And just, I've been running the business. Yes. That's what he meant to say. <laughs> <laughs> so she's been she's been taking care of all of that while I've been working for somebody else. And now that I'm able to, you know, concentrate on the business, it's it's a lot better. We're able to have a better work home balance. And it's it's actually kind of funny. Our our house is we're doing some renovations, some rather extensive renovations. A few weeks ago we uh we wanted to play games with our kids, and so we just came over to the warehouse and set up a table and played games. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. So uh, I think you've already kind of started talking about what sets you guys apart from other people. The first thing that kind of surprised me when I, when I first met you was I think a lot of supplement companies do, I call, I call it fair, fairy dusting, I don't know what you call it, but where they... <laughs> They proprietary say everything's a blend, and uh, the fact that you guys just kind of lay it all out there. What other things like that set you apart from like other other companies that might be in your space? Well, um, there's we're really the whole point of doing keto chow was to make keto easier for people. 
Um, well, okay, let me go back. It was to make keto easier for myself, <laughs> but I also <laughs> wanted to make it easier for other people. I didn't want anybody else to get keto flu. I wanted to share that openly with everybody and um, just I wanted it to help people succeed. Um, uh, you can call it altruistic if you want, but it was just more of it, it'd be the jerk thing to do to do anything else. And so there's that. Um, I also absolutely insist on basically living off the product for a long amount of time to make sure that everything is good. Um, before I, I release anything, there's been at least anywhere from three to six months where it's been 80 to 90% of my calories has been the version of keto chow that's coming out because I want to have absolute complete confidence in it so that when somebody says, well, am, is this, is this going to be good for me? Am, am I going to be able to live off this if, if I have dental surgery? It's like, yeah, you, you totally can because I lived off it for six weeks and here are my blood tests to prove it. So it's kind of one of our getting things. And more than anything else, uh, coming back to helping people with keto, um, every once in a while we'll get somebody who is using it to help their, their kid with, who has epilepsy or something like that. And that just always really gets to us because that's, that was our kid. <laughs> that was our kid. And, you know, well, I don't, I, you might've heard Brian Williamson of Keto Evangelist to describe his kid having seizures. And, uh, I think I didn't let my wife listen to that episode for a while because <laughs> uh, yeah, that just yeah. really tugs at our hearts. So I, I can totally understand that having a couple of kids, man, I can't imagine when you said the, when you first said 12 different types of medication, I was just like, okay, I can't, I can't even mentally wrap my mind around that, the frustration as a parent, but getting back to the experiments. Yeah. You, so you, you talked about, um, eating this and then doing blood work. So you have that posted on your website, correct? Your, your blood work. Uh, so, so I've got a couple of experiments. Um, there were some really low key ones where I just tested my, I, I tested my blood glucose for like 12 hours to see what eating two meals of keto chow would do to my blood glucose. Surprise. It didn't do much of anything. Um, and that was the, <laughs> that's what I was assuming it would do. Surprise. Unevent. What's that? I said, surprise, it was an uninvent. And that was the result I was looking for. But then um, along with that, um, so you guys probably know this guy named Dave Feldman. Have you heard of him? Oh, yeah. Yeah, once or twice. <laughs> As a matter of fact, last time I saw him, it was with you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're totally geeking out on sci-fi shows, and I'm sorry for alienating you. But... Um, <laughs> Uh, anyway, so I was, I was, I've been talking to, I, well, I was talking to Dave about different blood tests and I'm like, Hey, you know, I want to do this, this blood test or this, this test where all I eat for four weeks is keto chow with nothing else. And w what blood test should I get? And so I, you know, I went back and forth with him and found out which ones were the best ones to get that would show the, the results best. And, uh, then I've been consulting with him on what re the results were. But the, the main point of the, uh, the um, test was I get a lot of haters, I guess you could say, um, people who say, you can't eat that much saturated fat or you're going to die. Or people who say, if you eat sucralose, you won't be in ketosis and the world will end. Or if you drink all of your calories, then your jaw will fall off or, you know. <laughs> I'm exaggerating a bit, but actually, uh, there's it's surprising what people will say about keto chow that you can't have that, you can't eat that, that can't be all your meals because it just won't work, or you're going to end up with some horrible disease or whatever. So I wanted to, well, I wanted to put my own skin in the game and put my money where my mouth was. So that's all I ate, literally for four weeks. I. I, I did have fish pills. That's actually part of the, uh, you have to get omega-3s. So if you do keto chow three times a day, you, you have to get that. So we sell fish pills in it as well. Um, I did on occasion um, add some salt to water just to get my electrolytes up. Um, but other than that, I drank water and I had keto chow and I had the fish pills. I didn't have any 
any other artificial sweeteners. I had no diet soda. I, I didn't have gum. Yeah, no gum, no nothing. And I didn't die. <laughs> Another not well, of it. You're talking with us. So. <laughs> well, I, I'm pretty impressed with that, the fact that you had just published all those results and everything. And so that is, a, I, I did notice that, that was on your website, and you've, you've even got it broken out to where it goes to a Google Sheets and has it all laid out. Yeah, well, so if, you, you, have, you if you've ever seen the movie uh, Fathead, um, yeah, it's a really good job at uh, kind of, well, taking apart uh, Morgan Spurlock's supersize me. Right. On the, one of the bases is that he won't release his food diaries. Mar uh, the supersize me guy won't. So how can you know what actually went into the test? You could be lying. He probably is lying, but what, that's neither here nor there. So I wanted to put all of the data out there. Because, well, um, as, oh, what's his name? Peter, Dr. Peter Ballerstead likes to say, um, an honest man, when he's found to be an error, will either cease to be honest or cease to be an error. So I wanted to put all of the data out there that I was doing so that people could critique it, so they could look and see what I did. And, and if there was something I did wrong, they could call me on the carpet and I could fix it. But I wanted to have it all out there, even my blood tests. And so yeah, that, that was that was that test. And then uh, one of the weeks, I got some really weird results. I was I was at a computer conference um, in San Francisco, and I had no access to refrigeration, so I couldn't use the normal heavy cream that I, I like to use. So I was forced to use avocado oil. And um, I well, first off, my my Blood ketones got all the way up to 5.5, which is like fasting range, but I was still eating, you know, 1,800, 2,000 calories. Um, but then I also, I had a spike in my triglycerides, and I wanted to know what that was. And Dave Feldman wanted to know what it was, too. So um, I uh, I wanted to do a new experiment where I, I tried different fatty acids, because we didn't know if it was the... Uh, the polyunsaturated fatty acids in the avocado oil, or if what caused it. So um, I'm on week five right now of a five six week experiment where I, I'm doing different types of fat isolated, um, and I'm using that to to see if I can figure out what caused the weird result, and also to see which what type of fatty acid is better, and. I can tell you right now that grapeseed oil causes my plantar fasciitis to come back after three years. Thank you very much. Um, and I, I can tell you that I like heavy cream a lot and that macadamia nut oil, you think you like macadamia nuts, but you don't like it that much. Not today. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, along with that, um, the problem with, well, there's a lot of scientific studies out there that do not account for women because they've got this whole menstrual cycle thing that messes up the data. So let's just ignore women entirely and just use men. So my wife and one of our friends agreed to um, kind of redo my four-week experiment. So you want to talk about that? Yeah, so we just finished. Holly and I did it. You met Holly. Um, and uh, it was interesting. So a while back, we cut back on the iron in keto chow because – Chris found out that men can overdose on iron. Well, when well, the I... The level that women require if they're yeah. uh, menstruating or menstrual or whatever, if they're normal women, um, is enough to be toxic for men at extended periods of time. So we had to cut back. So when I did my four-week experiment and when Holly did it, we both got low on iron. So I have to take iron supplements. <laughs> but, like, everything was wonderful. It everything t like it tasted really good the whole time i wasn't sick of keto chow by the end of four weeks and i had good bowels and i had I, I just felt really good and i lost 12 pounds holly lost 15 in four wow. weeks um time but i noticed like so much my relationship with food because even though i had been eating keto foods i didn't notice how much I've been snacking. Every time you walk past the pantry, you have to grab a handful of nuts. And I'm thinking, well, I'm eating good things, and I'm eating small portions or whatever, 
but I didn't realize that I was eating so much, and that's probably why I hadn't lost weight in such a long time. So it's really good for me to kind of evaluate, reevaluate my relationship with food and say, well, I don't need this, and I, I'm not hungry. I, I was never, ever hungry. There were times that I'd get to the end of the day and, oh, I forgot to drink my third keto chow for dinner because I wasn't hungry, so whoops. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a good problem to have, but still you got to keep on top of that. You don't want to completely restrict yourself, right? Yeah. Well, now she's doing uh, Maria Emmerich's 30-day 30 30 cleanse. Yeah. <laughs> so it's delicious. <laughs> <laughs> so um, if somebody was interested in starting a keto business, what's uh, like what's one piece of advice you'd, you'd give them that you wish you would have kind of learned well, let's see. Um, well, quit your day job. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Most people say, I wish I, well, I have I heard a lot of people say they wish they quit earlier. But I think from a comfort level, you guys definitely uh, made, made sure everything was working in a well, well kind of, I guess, oiled machine before you quit, which is, I, I think, pretty important could be pretty important for from a stability standpoint. Well, the, one of the main things that kept me from quitting was we had insanely good insurance, just like you wouldn't believe good insurance. And we insurance. have kids. And we have kids. So um, I, I really should have quit a year ago, but I didn't know what to do about insurance. Um, I was actually talking to Robin Schweitzer of uh, Keto Con and Keto Evangelist fame, and she quit her job and went on Cobra. And I'm like, oh, yeah. I have heard about that. It'll get us by for a minute. Yeah, it'll get us by for at least a year, year and a half. But um, yeah, but knowing when to quit your job um, so that you can actually dedicate to it, um, that's a good thing to do. Um, getting in touch with social media um, because it's keto is still, I mean, it's growing. It's really growing, but it's still kind of a niche thing. Um, to just today, in fact, uh, somebody posted to a Facebook group, that, a local Facebook group that I'm in, about a bakery that is like 10 miles south of us. It turns out the owner of the, one of the owners of the bakery is doing keto, and I'm like, wow, that must really suck. And she's like, yeah, it kind of does, but they're doing um, keto desserts now. So we're going to go oh. meet them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mary's going to go down and buy some stuff because one of our daughters who is doing keto. Her, her birthday's on Monday. So yeah. we're going to get her cupcake. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, it's not a cupcake. It's a chocolate cheesecake with uh, salted caramel on top. Oh, yeah. Or lemon uh, peel uh, trifle or something like that. But, yeah, getting, getting in with social media is a really good way to do it. Um, most of my growth, now I, I might be weird, but most of the growth of our business is actually tied to Reddit, which is a really interesting place. It's very unforgiving. And anytime somebody posts anything positive about my company, everybody jumps in and yells, shell, shell. Mm. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Well, Reddit, Reddit is definitely uh, not for the faint of heart. So it's, it's pretty amazing that when I saw, uh, I think when I first went to your website shortly after Ketogon, I was like, really? He's got, he's, you just list your Reddit channel like right there? Because talk about trolls, Reddit's pretty, can be pretty unforgiving as I think you've, you you termed it before. Well, and, uh, and we've, we've been lucky that almost all of our growth has been completely organic. We've done very, very little advertising. Um, that might change now that I'm doing this full time, but I I like to, I, and that's another suggestion I can have to people is be genuine. Um, I truly believe that this is a good product. Uh, we're not selling people something to make us rich. That was another reason why I kept the job for the longest time was, you know, it, it wasn't my full time job and we're giving away the recipe for free. So, but have something that genuinely is will help people. and if you do that then it's going to work out for you um, that's where you'll find success because then you're able to give people information uh, somebody jumps on and and you can tell them hey I don't care if you use my product to do keto but look into keto because yeah. it can change your life 
And, and that's one of the things I was really impressed about is you, you've got like some free guides that you that comes with the products that talks about it. I mean, you spend a lot more time kind of on a more, I don't want to say a keto mission, but you definitely have, you can tell that it's a passion and not just a, a product for you. Yeah, well, because we want people to succeed. I mean, if, if you want to take the selfish or the uh, commercial version of it, the more people stay on keto, the more they're going to use our product. But more than that... Um, we want people to get healthy and be happy. Yeah, because, oh man, if I had known about keto when I was 13... Holy cow. <laughs> well, and before my mother passed away, she passed away in 2012 from cancer, and she was always obese, uh, morbidly obese. She was 400 pounds when we got married. And what could that have done to her life? She could have had a long, long life. And we didn't know about we when we'd, we'd briefly heard about keto, but we didn't research it and and get into it. I mean, how could that have changed her life? She could still be here. So we just want people to know that it's something out there that you can use as a tool. You can change your life and you can be better. Yep. Well, I, I, I think that's a fantastic, uh, part, parting, parting comment because I, yeah. I think we definitely agree. And that's one of the reasons why you know, we volunteer our time at our office to do these type of lunch and learn things. So we really appreciate you uh, spending the time with us and giving us some information. Uh, I, I know uh, we definitely want you to could you give us all of your website and just a couple of the – we can link to all the social media in the show notes, but just to make sure uh, they hear your website because it's kind of a little u unique because you don't have a .com name. So uh, – when uh, when I registered the the keto chow Twitter handle, um, within I think it was within a couple hours, I got a notification from somebody offering to sell me ketochow.com, which is kind of fishy, especially considering that I had contacted the guy who owned ketochow.com. He was some guy in England. I, I tried to get a hold of him, couldn't. I finally did get a hold of him. He sold it to this domain squatter for it was like sixty bucks. And the domain squatter wanted like uh, at least a thousand. He said, "Make me an offer, at least four figures." And I was like, um, "No, <laughs> I'm not going to pay you. I'm not going to pay your uh, your protection money." So I, I we went with ketochow.xyz. I I think well, I it, deep down in my heart I did it just to uh, kind of bug my mom because she would think that that was improper. But uh, and and Miriam didn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it definitely sticks in your mind. Yeah, absolutely. So if it's not, I mean, uh, how many times do you spend spend an extra extra time talking about your URL? <laughs> Probably not. So you have XYZ <laughs> instead of .com. So, so it's it's all on ketochow.xyz. It used to be on my own personal blog because I was blogging about everything. But yeah, we have it there now. Um, and anywhere on. As Brian Williamson says, the Facebooks, then the Instagrams, and the Twitters. Um, anywhere you look for it, at Keto Chow, you're going to find us. Or just search at, for Keto Chow. We're right there at the top. And just one last pitch for your YouTube. I, I was pretty impressed with your uh, kind of the way you kind of made pre-made all of your liquid in a in a big jar. I, was just, I definitely looked at that and thought, man, why did I not think of that? That's a cool time-saving hack. <laughs> So we'll definitely um, have, have to have everybody go out to your YouTube channel. If nothing else, they can see that. Well, and I, I do that. Um, I had to figure out a way to do multiple at the same time because my wife does keto chow, especially when she was doing her experiment. I'm doing it. Um, three of my kids are doing keto, and two of them were consistently stealing my blender bottles out of the fridge. And so and taking them to lunch. Yeah, take them or, or breakfast. Uh, Dad, I forgot my breakfast. Can you throw a keto chow and a hydro flask for me? Okay, yeah, I can. So it still happens. <laughs> so I had to come up with a way to make it kind of in mass. So that's that's the whole using a, a water pitcher and a blender. So perfect. All right, guys. So thank you so much for joining us. Uh, it's been a pleasure. I'm sure we'll be talking to you a lot more, and hopefully we'll see you guys at uh, KetoCon 2018 as well. We both are planning to go. Um, we will have all of the social media in our uh, show notes, 
as well as um, Chris and Miriam have been kind enough to give us a coupon code. So any of the listeners who want to go out, they can use Ketonian Corner 10 to get $10 off of your order. We'll also have that in our show notes. You can find us at Ketonian Corner on all socials, um, ketoniancorner at gmail.com if you have any questions, comments, or any feedback that you guys want to give us. We appreciate everybody listening, and go out and give us some iTunes reviews. Thanks. Thank <laughs> you.